will be a charm. It's it's absolutely late for me to be on uh, this time of the night. This is unusual. I've done a couple unusual things this evening. So you see in the title, it says it's all about choices. So I felt completely led to come on and just share what was on my heart with you. I was watching TV. Now, if you've been following me for quite some time, you know, I don't watch TV. I haven't in years. The only time I do is if, you know, maybe I'm watching a program with my daughter and those times have become um, less frequent than they were before. So it's still telling me the same thing. I think I'm having a bad connection because of how the weather was. Hopefully I won't continue to see this little notification that they're giving me here. Um, let me see if I can find myself up from my phone. So you see in the title it says it's all about choices. So I watched a program on, it was actually YouTube I was watching on my TV. So I don't know if that really counts as TV, but it was a, a real program. And it was starring Cicely Tyson. I don't know how many of you, you know, may have heard of the actress um, who was Cicely Tyson, but she starred in the movie. And the theme of the movie talked about her desire. She was really a, a, an elderly lady in the movie living with her son and his wife. And it really was centered around her wanting to go back home. She wanted to go back to where she grew up, to where um, the land of her parents were. She talked about the, the town was called Bountiful. I don't remember the name of the movie, but she said it had been 20 years since she had been back. So it was an excellent movie. And right after that movie, another movie comes on and I say, hey, I'm just gonna watch it. And it's actually a Lifetime movie, but it was on YouTube, so go figure. I, I don't know anything about how that works anymore as far as programs. But this particular program was about a young lady who had not been to her hometown in 20 years. And I, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this is coincidental that these two programs back to back are talking about women who had not been back to their hometowns for over 20 years for different reasons, but they both had huge measures of regret. They both had huge measures of regret. Maybe some things happened during high school for the last movie, the last lady in the movie, and um, I know she had a child that she, um, I believe gave up for adoption. I didn't even finish watching the whole thing because I felt so led to come on because it, it just reminded me of the choices that we have in life and how we make those choices from one of two places. And we live our life from one or two places. And that's from fear or from love. So we're gonna make decisions based on fear we're going to live our life based on fear or we make decisions based on love when we live our life from a space of love. And fear, okay, first of all, fear, <clears throat> acute measures of fear is very natural. It is this innate thing that God has gifted us with whenever we are potentially in physical or emotional danger, right? So it's a good thing that we have that acute fear that occurs. But then there's um, low level fear um, that becomes stressful from different events or it can be world circumstances. It can be things that you see on the news all the time or listening to um, information like when we had the um, pandemic over a, a few years. Those are like low levels of fear that continuously happen all the time, they create a measure of fear in our life as well. The low level stress that happens over time, like small intervals here and there, they create stress um, in our lives and 
if we are consistently listening to fear-based media or fear-based events or circumstances, it can cause us to live out our life in fear. It can cause us to be overly cautious about moves that we make and things that we do in life. As I was watching the two movies, I thought about my own life. And I will say that I am a risk taker. So I, I don't think my risk taking is average. Um, I do take calculated risks. But there have been times in my life where the risk that I took was because of what was on the inside of me. It was because of a nudge or um, a burning desire or it just felt right and I just went with it. And I have absolutely no regrets. I remember <clears throat> when I graduated from the trade school, I went to college, left college, went to a trade school. When I graduated, I remember leaving and going to work in a new city where I knew no one. And guys, I don't suggest anyone does this, but I didn't even have a job. I didn't even have a job. And I landed the most amazing, I manifested the most amazing opportunity that I could have ever had, which landed me in the arms of my mentor who owned um, over nine different locations of a business she had franchised. She had hired over 1,500 people. I mean, I just, I couldn't have asked for a better place to be. And I remember going for an interview at that particular location and it was a two to three part interview. I did the first part, I was supposed to come back and do practical application. I never came back, but they called me right and so I still ended up with the job just so many things that I was manifesting um, and then the other time well when I opened my brick-and-mortar service-based business I knew no one other than my mentor who at this point I no longer lived in the city that she lived in I'd moved hours away from that city and I, I knew no one personally right that had opened a brick and mortar business no one to walk me through it but you know I had taken classes I would studied I had mastered my craft and it was a part of my vision and so I moved on it and, and even when I think back on it now I'm like man like I didn't have I, the fear just wasn't there for me um, I hired 12 employees who worked for our company not contract to help I hired employees that I led and you know from time to time I'll go back and say man where where did that courage come from but I believe that well I know a part of it has been my parents even when I watch them now in their more mature years there is a a sense of there's a growth mindset. That's that's a, an amazing term to use for what I see in my parents who still do things that in my mind scare me a little bit in the opportunities that they place themselves in as it relates to their business. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. And so I do believe that I, I won't take any credit for it. I do believe a lot of it came from my parents, which a lot of what we get, a lot of what we believe, a lot of how we feel comes from those people who raised us or who we've spent a lot of time with. I've shared on several occasions <clears throat> that although I had an abundant mindset, I had a growth mindset, there was a season in my adult life where that had turned to scarcity and lack and it's because of the people that were around me and it, it took me years to come out of that. I still even to this day, <clears throat> find times where I'm doing inner work on that that I wouldn't have needed to do before when I wanted to make a decision about a next level move in my life. And so it can happen at any time where we take on this fear-based mindset where what we're wanting to do really, there's no real fear involved with it. Like if it failed, it wouldn't be like horrible, 
right? But when you live based on fear, a lot of the things that you desire to do in your heart, you, you just won't do. And when I thought about the women, 20 years is a long time to have a desire for something that you don't do. And I don't know if I made this you know, promise to myself or something, but <clears throat> I just knew it was some things that I wanted to do and I was going to do it. Like I was not letting grass grow under my feet or 20, 30 years go by. And I wasn't at least on the path to what it was that I desired, right? And so if, I mean, remember, we have two ways that we're going to live out our life. We're either going to live it out from a fear-based space or from love. Like, I love myself. I love the opportunity. I love the experience. I'm betting on myself. We either live and make choices based on fear or based on love. After I was married for 14 years, I had an opportunity to keep our marriage home, do a buyout, you know, and give the buyout to my ex-husband or vice versa. Like, he stay, refinance, give me a buyout, and I leave. I chose the latter. Most people think it's the craziest thing that I could have ever done, but I wanted a fresh start. And I had a vision. I had a vision that was bigger than where I currently was. And I just remember deciding, choosing love. Love for myself, love for my daughter, love for even the word of God and everything that I had learned about faith and belief and all of those things. And I chose love. I chose to live my life from a space of love and not from a space of, of fear. And if you find that there are things that you're designed to do, but fear is holding you back, you have to work against the fear. And one of the ways to work against the fear is to take action in the direction that you truly want to head. Those are choices, right? So here are some ways to know if you've been operating your life, your business off of fear. Number one, if you find yourself settling. See, I was living my life in fear in my marriage, not like fear for my life or anything, but fear because I was settling. Fear of if this doesn't work, what will I do? As if there wasn't a whole big world of opportunity um, and experiences awaiting me. Number two, if you find yourself procrastinating. If you find yourself procrastinating, there's a likelihood that you are operating your life off of fear. You're operating your business growth from a space of fear. If you're operating from perfectionism. Now, there are a lot of people who feel, I got to get it perfect. I need to know all the things. And there is no such thing. Like we won't have all the answers. Failing is a part of the journey. The quicker you fail, the quicker you get to success because there is gonna be some failure in the process. If you find that you're numbing yourself, and what I mean by that is, if you're doing everything except that thing that you desire in your heart, except for the thing that you really feel is going to move you to the next level. If you're doing busy work, like every time you get ready to go do the thing, you go clean out the garage, or you start cleaning out your you know your closet you just start doing all the things to avoid doing the thing that's actually going to take you to the next level there is a huge likelihood that you're operating off of fear you go read a book you do everything except the thing that's actually going to move the needle in the direction that you desire for your business and your life to grow and here's some things that you can do turn your shoulds like i should do this into non-negotiables. Listen, I remember um, as I was going through my divorce and deciding what to do next, my daughter and I moved to a completely different city. She got accepted into a school of arts, which was something that was like on the vision anyway. It just, that timing was perfect, right? It was like, okay, now's the perfect time. Do it now. I had been researching places and what better time when I was you know, taking a fresh start in my life. We moved to a completely different city. I enrolled my daughter in a new school. We, we knew no one, right? And it's because as I was going through my divorce, I heard God clearly say, get connected to your vision. Get connected to your vision. 
So if you don't have a vision, listen, I have an amazing program inside the academy. It's called Design Your Destiny. It's the first portion. Helps you to get uber clear <laughs> on your vision. N not only that, there's money aspects in that program that help you to increase while you're getting the clarity and all the things, but vision is so important. It's the thing that helps you to not move in fear. If you stay connected to the vision, if you don't have a vision, if you're not clear on it, listen, join the academy. Number two, be mindful of your excuses. Sometimes some of the reasons that you're given for not doing the thing that's gonna take you to the next level is really an excuse, it's not a reason. It's really an excuse and you have to be mindful. You have to talk to yourself and say, am I making excuses? Is this a real reason or am I afraid and I'm making excuses? Adopt a growth mindset. I talked to you all earlier about the fact that I believe my growth mindset, the foundational portion of it anyway, came from my parents. Of course, I studied it in the work that I've been studying for over a decade now. Um, I studied it and applied it. I realized that foundationally, I was operating from a growth mindset, but being aware is super huge because when I, when I was married, I found myself not operating in a growth mindset. Give you guys an example. So I've been given an amazing um, proposal opportunity for a multi six figure opportunity to um, work with the company and I don't know all the things in that particular industry they understand that they came to me now I could have um, I can have a growth mindset and say there may be some things that I don't know how to do but I can learn how now they, they know this but they I'm the person that they wanted for this particular thing I could operate in complete fear and say, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? But listen, I know my stuff, right? And the things that I don't know, I can learn. It's the same for you. Listen, we only know what we know, like right now. But it doesn't mean that we can't learn. It doesn't mean that you can't figure it out. And you're not going to have all of the answers along the way. Sometimes you're just going to have to bet on yourself. The next thing is to adopt an abundance mindset. There is no lack of clients. There is no lack of resources. There is no lack of money. There's, it's abundance all around us. And when we get tapped in, especially if we're operating from a space of abundance and, a, and having a growth mindset, the, the provision, it just comes. And I, I know I'm saying that as if it's super easy. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's simple. It's there. All the opportunities we could ever have are already there waiting for us to align, waiting for us to take the next move. It's like sometimes we're asking God to bless us with something we haven't even stepped out on. It's like, with what? And he's waiting on you to make the first move or the next move, whatever that space may be for you. Um, and last but not least, if you find that you've been operating in fear, get a clear vision and get really, really connected to it. The last few clients that I've been speaking to, the last two clients that I've spoken to, who reached out for um, support in their business, they had a vision. Like, I was super excited. So they're, they're hiring me to help support them in the vision but it was a beautiful thing to hear people saying I'm going to do this and then I'm going to use this to do this and then ultimately I want it to do this I love it I absolutely love it now will some things in their plans change over time it's very likely but a vision gives you direction Right? It gives you at least the next move while you allow the move after that to appear. And so it's all about choices. I just wanted to share this with you this evening. I'm hoping that this 
video was clear because I keep getting this little message, but I felt led and um, wanted to ask you the question, are you operating your life and your business from a space of fear or space of love? And the deeper love you have for people, the people you wanna serve, um, the people you wanna support yourself, the moves you make change. And so I encourage you to increase your belief and if you don't have the belief that you need, you can borrow mine. Whenever I co-create with a client, a lot of it is them borrowing my belief until they can calibrate their own at that level. And so I give you permission to borrow my belief, to allow me to support you and um, hold space for you while you evolve into that next level of belief for whatever it is that you deserve and you desire. That's my take. I wanted to share that with you all. I will leave ways that I can support you in the comments and seeing um, your vision, your business, in your life come into fruition. But um, none of us wanna be those ladies that waited 20 years. It's a long time. Peace and abundance.